But we did not think it was an insurrection because it was not an insurrection. It was not even close to an insurrection. Not a single person in the crowd that day was found to be carrying a firearm, some insurrection. According to Tucker Carlson, his show isn't playing along with the January 6th show trial hearing because the whole thing is insulting. They are lying and we're not going to help them do it, he says. Now we know why Fox News is refusing to show footage of the January 6th committee hearings. It's for the same reason Jada Pinkett Smith hasn't seen a clip of the slap. They were there to see it live and are a big reason why it happened. As for the quibbling about whether or not what happened that day based on weapons, gallows my dude. But even the most basic level duck duck go search will show that an insurrection doesn't solely depend on guns. Although this third definition says the armed resistance of a number of persons to the power of the state, incipient or limited rebellion. So, okay. Would Tucker prefer the term coup d'etat? Also called a coup, it's defined as the sudden violent overthrow of an existing government by a small group. The chief prerequisite for a coup is control of all or part of the armed forces, the police, and the other military elements. But see, there are three types of coups according to Samuel Huntington in Political Order in Changing Societies. These are a breakthrough coup led by a revolutionary group or military, a guardian coup when an elite seizes power from another elite, and a veto coup when the military intervenes to protect a status quo from a radical political change. Also, a military coup is a typical quick takeover that relies heavily on the element of surprise. After securing government buildings and imprisoning the deposed leader, the military declares itself in control. Furthermore, the self-coup denotes an incumbent government aided and abetted by the military, assuming extra constitutional powers. Another form of a self-coup is when a government, having been defeated in an election, refuses to step down. Additionally, old coups when the army strikes in the middle of the night and new coups which take place during mass uprisings. There's also something called a medical coup. Here's a quote from the Washington Post. Today, Rising polarization bodes ill for the risk of coup attempts in the Democratic West. And in this article written before the events of January 6, 2021, John Chin said, Since 2016, the United States has seen a rise in such partisan divisions, leading Politifive, another research project, to downgrade the country's democracy score for the first time in more than 50 years. Here's more. Unlike an armed conflict and civil wars, Fighting and death are not defining features of coups. Sure, all coup attempts involve at least an implicit threat of force, but fewer than half result in fatalities, according to data compiled by the political scientist Erica De Bruin. As has been argued, coups may be better thought of as complex coordination games rather than pitched battles among military factions. I'm not saying that what took place on that day after Trump told his supporters to fight some 20 times was well executed and the participants were organized or trained, but they were under the impression that the election was stolen and how much of that came from Fox News and Tucker Carlson. So I don't know if Trump fits any one definition of coup or three that I just cataloged. Tucker Carlson and his audience can choose for themselves, or maybe 45 invented a new kind of coup, one where an incumbent president was in contact with a Fox News host and urged Georgia election officials to quote, find 11,780 votes. And his phone call logs went dark for a weird amount of time. Plus he doesn't know what a burner phone is. A Supreme Court justice's wife tried to switch electors in Arizona. The goal of that day was on full display the weeks following and we knew this was coming before it occurred to disrupt the transfer of power. As for what actually did happen at our nation's capital, Tucker would later say that's still unknown and we're still learning about it a year and a half later. Although he refuses to watch, he could have done a point by point takedown of evidence but chose not to. He called the damages vandalism and referred to the participants as rioters. That falls well short of the truth. The Fox News audience should take this as a slap in the face. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.